It's Adam here for PC Monitors and today I'm going to be taking a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of the ViewSonic XG2401. The OSD is controlled by pressable clicky buttons on the underside of the bottom bezel. There's also a power indicator in the middle. You can't see that from a normal viewing position so it's not distracting at all. And that glows blue when the monitor's on and glows amber if the monitor loses signal to the computer. First button there has a 2 on it. If you press that, it just cycles between different sources for the monitor. The next button along has a down arrow. This allows you to quickly access the audio adjust menu for the integrated speakers of the monitor or anything connected by a 3.5mm headphone jack. It's then an up arrow, and it has a little G, I think it is, a little symbol next to it. And if you press that on its own, it allows you to activate one of the game mode presets. There are various different game mode presets here. The first three are customizable to a certain degree. But you note that the contrast slash brightness is actually locked off. So you can't adjust them. I'm just checking if there's a dynamic contrast. Yeah, there's also a dynamic contrast mode associated with this as well. Um, yeah, you can't you can't adjust certain settings with this enabled either. You can adjust the sharpness, although the image always seems to be overly sharp with this mode active no matter what you're doing. Basically I don't much like any of these gaming presets, there are some slightly different ones as well. You can see for example FPS 1, FPS 2, RTS, MOBA, off. Um, so to mention I'm struggling a bit with this menu system because it's completely counterintuitive and completely confusing as I've seen on other ViewSonic monitors. I have no idea why they do it like this but if you see there's a number two there and a number one there yet on the menu system once you get onto it it says one exit select two so one two which makes sense but it's actually two one on the system and it's just it's mind-boggling. I have no idea why they've done it like that but it's very confusing and not very intuitive at all. Now back to these gaming presets. FPS 1 mode, that knocks out the colour adjust menu, but it seems you can still adjust the brightness but not the contrast. To be honest the image looks a bit, um, a bit flooded with this mode. Um, the gamma looks like it's lower. It's um, Again, it's just not I often find with gaming presets or various presets on monitors, I, I just um, I have been through these before and I don't like any of them. Um, RTS is overly sharp, looks a bit oversaturated as well. MOBA very oversaturated, again seems to have a dynamic contrast mode associated with it which you can't actually disable. So not really very useful. My favourite setting there at the bottom, off for the game mode. The next button along, 1, if you press that on its own, it simply allows you to get into the main OSD menu system. There's also a power button, which, as you'd suspect, controls the power state of the monitor. So the main menu system has a slightly garish red coloration which is probably to show that this is an AMD FreeSync compatible monitor. A bit of branding of sorts there. The first bit of the menu, contrast and brightness, does what it says on the tin, allows you to adjust the contrast and brightness of the monitor. Input select, very similar to the pressing button 2 on its own but allows you to specifically select an input with the listing there. Audio adjust which I've been through already. 
colour adjust menu. This has various different colour presets which are explored in the review. The user colour one allows you to adjust the red, green and blue colour channels manually. There is information and this is actually quite useful. It does give you a vertical frequency and that actually changes. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say in real time, I'm not sure if it's exactly real time, but it does very quickly change um, if you've got FreeSync enabled and that's actually the only indication of that FreeSync is enabled. Um, if the content, the frame rate of your content is changing, then the refresh rate of the monitor changes to correspond to that and you'll see this change on the menu system there. There's also various other bits of information about the monitor there. The manual image adjust allows you to change the sharpness level. You can change that in increments of 25, the default of 50 being optimal in my view. It's a dynamic contrast setting which is explored in the review. A few greyed out things, aspect ratio, overscan, they only apply to various non-native resolutions or when you've got the monitor connected to an older games console perhaps. Various eco mode settings, standard optimize and conserve, these basically set the brightness to uh, certain preset values to try and save a bit of energy. Optimize being a bit dimmer than I was using for my normal settings, conserve even dimmer again, and standard just being whatever you've got your brightness set to. There's a blue light filter as well, it's quite a nice little feature. You can set that in increments of 1 between 0 and 100. So 0 is the strongest level of blue light reduction and 100 is no blue light reduction. But if you've actually enabled this or changed this, then you can actually just set it to, you know, if you like to use 0 as your blue light filter setting and you want to deactivate it, you can actually just go into the colour adjust menu and reselect um, whatever you were using before, like user colour. So there, the blue light filter is now deactivated. And if I want to quickly activate the blue light filter again, I simply just have to reselect where it says 0 there. Advanced Image Just that has various other settings. There is View Mode, so these are an another um, set of presets for the monitor. There's a Game ones which I've already gone through, I didn't like them at all. Standard, which is what I'm using here. The um, Movie, which I've, I've gone through some of these in the, um, the review, but I haven't spent too much time going through them because Movie just makes everything look far too cool, washed out and uh, too bright as well and you can't actually manually adjust the brightness so I'm not really a fan of any of these presets except for the colour adjust settings which are quite useful. So there's also web um, text which I do go through in the review because that's another low blue light setting and mono which I also look at in the review which makes everything black and white. There is Smart Sync, which is a ridiculous setting, and in the marketing materials it says something along the lines of it automatically chooses the fastest refresh rate and input lag lowest, blah blah blah, a load of rubbish. What it does is it makes the image look overly sharp, it forces dynamic contrast on, which looks horrendous, makes everything look completely wrong, and perhaps adding insult to injury gives you an incredible amount of overshoot. Um, basically as the highest response time setting does on this monitor. So unless you're um, one of those people who sort of likes everything to look like you've been taking some uh, banned substances then I'd just leave this off. AMD FreeSync which is explored in the review response time, also explored in the review. There are various different settings there, standard, advanced, ultra fast, so I find standard uh, best optimized overall. Various low input lag settings, to be honest 
I just leave that on ultra fast because there doesn't seem to be any negative impact and it is, as it says, ultra fast, has very little signal delay. Black stabilization, which is very much like the black equalizer feature found on BenQ monitors. If you decrease this, things start looking a bit washed out and you get lots of crushing of shades um, and essentially dark shades look darker than they should. It messes up the gamma curve a bit, whatever you do here. The, the default setting is 5, but really the point in this setting is if you want um, dark uh, details in dark areas to be more distinctive. So, for example, you want to be able to spot enemies in, in dark areas on a game, then you can increase the black stabilization setting and it uh, increases your visibility in places like that. It also increases the saturation levels. Um, it does clip shades, it causes oversaturation, but um, I mean, yeah, if you want a competitive advantage, you might be interested in that setting. Advanced ECR, dynamic contrast ratio, which is explored in the review. Dynamic contrast setting has various different levels you can set that to. Um, between 0 and 100 in increments of 25. There's setup menu. That allows you to change various things such as the language that the OSD is displayed in, whether a resolution notice comes on the screen when you're basically running the monitor at a non-native resolution, it reminds you that you should be using the native Full HD resolution. You can change the position of the OSD on the screen, horizontally and vertically. Change the timeout period, which I should have really done before starting this video, which is a time in seconds that the OSD is displayed on the screen before automatically disappearing. You can make the background of the OSD transparent if you like. You can, if you've got the uh, some ViewSonic software installed, you can have it so the screen will automatically um, rotate according to the pivot. So if you've got the monitor in portrait mode, you can uh, have it automatically adjust. And I do say elsewhere, really, that portrait mode is not really very useful for twisted pneumatic monitors because of the viewing angle restrictions. It makes things look um, obviously very bad and very inconsistent. Auto power off, so if the monitor loses signal for a certain amount of time from the computer, it'll automatically just uh, uh, turn itself off or put itself into standby, basically. Sleep, um, probably a similar setting. It's... Um, grayed out for me here for some reason. I'm not really sure what that's supposed to do. Perhaps if you... No, not sure. Power indicator, so if you do find that little blue light which is actually not visible from a normal viewing position distracting at all, you can in fact turn it off. There's a display port 1.2 option which is a bit of a redundant feature on this monitor. Now, I haven't looked at this for a while, but I'm quite sure that 144 Hz um, at full HD resolution is supported by DisplayPort 1.1. Um, and if you enable FreeSync, it doesn't matter if you have this enabled or disabled, uh, FreeSync automatically uses DisplayPort 1.2a. It needs that to work. So it doesn't matter what you set here, FreeSync works all the same. And the monitor seems to work exactly the same no matter what you've got set there. I suspect it's just a setting that's included on various other monitors and they've just included it here rather than taking it off. If you do have a graphics card that doesn't support DisplayPort, DisplayPort 1.2 and it only um, supports 1.1 for example, then Perhaps you do need to disable this, I'm not really sure, because my graphics card supports 1.2 anyway. So, a bit of a confusing, possibly redundant setting there. And finally, there's a memory recall option, and that just resets everything to the factory defaults. And I've just successfully reset everything to the factory defaults when I actually wanted to exit the menu, so I'm going to have to do a bit of fiddling about after this video. Hope you've enjoyed the video. I've been Adam for PC Monitors. Be sure to check out the full review on PCMonitors.info.